Setting Environment Variables An In-Service Presentation Today we're talking about environment variables. These are things that are used in computing to uh, simplify access to information that you may not want to hard code into your programs or into your scripts. There's a lot of mechanisms for doing this. Um, and they're also sometimes used as an alternative to having information in configuration files. Environment variables are machine dependent and there's several things that they depend on. The operating system being used, what shell is being used, and uh, there's other contextual information that might play a role in how you use them. Here we're going to be talking about those environment variables dealing with a couple of different operating systems, specifically Linux or Mac OS X, which is the Apple operating system, and Windows. In Windows, it's usually done, you usually define uh, system-wide or user-wide environment variables using a graphical user interface, like the one that we see on the upper right here but you can also use them in batch scripts or on the command line by using something called the set command. So here's a little walkthrough of how we would do this. I have a remote desktop to a Windows Vista machine and what I'm going to do is bring up a command console and I'm going to use the set command to show what environment variables are already defined on my machine. So I type set and you can see all of these values have already been set. These are environment variables that are available to me and to my scripts. So now let's um, first clear the screen a bit and I want to see if there's an environment variable called jed. And you notice that the syntax I use percent jed percent. That's Windows way of denoting a, an environment variable. And as you can see, there was nothing presented, so that means we don't have an environment variable called JET. So now I'm coming into the graphical user interface. I go through the control panel, and I'm looking for the edit environment variables screen. And I go down here, and I click environment variables. And now I'm creating a system-wide environment variable called JED. So I put in the name of the variable, and then I'm going to place it uh, some value so Jed is the head of the Clampets. Family, and I'm going to save this by clicking OK. Again, OK to get out of the next dialog. And, and finally, OK to get out of the main system properties. So now I'm going to do that same command, echo, percent, Jed, percent. And now I can see that JED doesn't appear to have any value. The reason for that is that I'm still in the same shell or console that had the pre-existing state of the machine with pre-existing environment variables. So if I spawn a new shell, I can echo percent JED, and now I'll get head of the Clampet family. So look at the little differences here. So after in Windows, after you assign or define a new environment variable, it's important that you spawn a new shell if you're going to be using those um, environment variables. Otherwise, they won't be recognized. Let's go on to the Mac OS X. Mac OS X is the, it's a Unix-like operating system used on most current Apple machines. Um, and to define environment variables in this environment, you usually do it through the shell interface. And on most of the current machines, they usually default to bash as the shell and uh, the bash scripts are kind of akin to the batch programming that is done on a Windows machine um, and even though you can do um, environment variables on uh, other scripting language we're going to focus pr principally on bash but we'll touch a little bit on C shell okay so again the shell that you use decides which syntax you're going to use and in bash which by the way stands for born again shell which is just the console environment that you're going to be using. You can use this syntax where it's the word export space and then the name of your variable and then the equal sign 
and then some data that represents what you want the variable to be associated with. There's another type of shell which is called the C shell and in that environment we use the set env um, command and the rest of the line is the same. Now these environment variables can usually get set when you log into your machine or you start a new uh, shell and the scripts are kind of like hidden from the operating system and you have to go out of your way to find and edit them and some they might have names that you might have heard of like dot bas h r c or dot profile or dot bas h underscore profile so let's do a little walkthrough so here I'm on, a, I'm on an apple machine in a console and I do the set command just like on windows and it lists all the shells that we know about it also tells me that shell is being assigned to bin bash, which means that I'm in the bash environment, the born again shell environment. So shell is the environment variable. And you can see down here, if I um, echo it, I can use these brackets to specify it. But there's a shorter way to do that. You just leave those brackets out and say echo shell, dollar shell. The dollar sign is this hint to the shell that you're interested in in an environment variable. Like before, let's see if there's a JED environment variable. Since it came up blank, that means we don't have one. So let's go ahead and, and create one. And again, since we're in bash, we're going to use the export command. And this time we'll say JED equals the head of the clampets. Okay. And now let's echo the same JED. And there you have it. Now that environment variable is available for um, all users of this shell and subsequent programs. So in a nutshell, environment variables are very easy to use. Um, you just need to assign them and then use them depending on your operating system. And they can be used across operating systems very easily. And with that, thank you very much. This in service has been sponsored by a grant from Tucson Technics, Engineering Young Minds in Technology, since